Welcome back to the third episode of the Canada Digital Learning Center's series on time-lapse photography. I'm Explorer of Light, Vincent Laferre. Now that we've discussed what to look for and how to set up your camera, let's get more into the creative choices of what you want to consider when shooting your time lapses. The first and most obvious decision you're going to make is what lens to choose. As a general rule, wide angle lenses tend to be the most popular ones used in time lapse photography. That being said, I want to point out that some of my favorite time lapses are actually shot with telephoto lenses or specialty lenses. My two favorite lenses for time lapse are the Canon 1635 2.8 and the 2470 2.8. With those two lenses, you can probably shoot 90% of all time lapses, let alone photography. So once you master those two lenses, you can then move on to more specialty lenses, whether it's a 24 millimeter prime, a telephoto lens, or my favorite, tilt shift lenses. First though, let's go ahead and start with the 1635. The reason it's such a good time lapse lens is it's an ultra wide angle lens from a 16 to more of a normal 35. But at 16, especially or 20, the lens has the properties of really emphasizing the foreground and making an environment feel very three-dimensional. So it's a great lens for time lapse. When you're going ahead and framing your shots up, here's some of the key decisions you have to make. And this is what I call what to include in your frame versus what to exclude. What you really want to do is make sure that you include anything that is visually interesting, that adds to your image, and that you exclude anything as distracting, whether it's a tree that's jutting into your frame, uh, something that's ugly in the foreground or distracting. Make sure that you treat that frame the way you would, let's say, a final painting on your wall. It's got to be composed absolutely perfectly, and that's the key to any good photograph and definitely a key to a good time lapse. There are two other things you need to pay attention to when you choose a lens. Wide angle lenses, for example, tend to exaggerate movement on the edges due to the natural distortion of the lens. The other thing is they tend to accentuate the size of the foreground subject. So when you go ahead and pick a wide angle lens, you really want to make sure that there's something in the foreground that's interesting. If you see a beautiful vista in the distance and you choose a wide angle lens, you're going to have what we call a lot of dead space or just nothing in the foreground. It's going to make for not a very good composition. That's when you might want to go with a tighter lens and compress a little bit more towards the back of your frame. In the end, you may find out that you're not exactly sure what lens to go with. This is really particularly true in time lapse because you're not sure if the clouds are going to play a big part in your time lapse. And you may want to shoot with a tighter lens to focus on the landscape in the foreground. My solution is to shoot with two cameras. Now, that's obviously a bit extreme for some of you, but something to consider. It gives you the best of both worlds. All you need is two tripods, two cameras, two lenses. Now comes the all-important choice of what vantage point to choose from. In other words, where you are relative to your subject. Sometimes you're going to want to be head on, other times you're going to be up looking down or low looking up at your subject. Ultimately, there's no golden rule for this. You just want to find the single best angle that really accentuates the best part of what you're shooting. As we get a bit more advanced, one of the things you're going to want to really want to pay attention to is the intervals between each frame or the spacing between each frame. You may initially think you're going to shoot over a 30 minute period, but a little magical moment's going to happen. Let's say, uh, an interval of one or two minutes. And that's the advantage of overshooting, because what you can do in post is what we call ramping. You can speed up the boring sections and then slow down for that magical moment. And you cannot slow down if you didn't shoot enough frames, so always keep that in mind. It never really hurts you to overshoot. And then comes the all-important and often overlooked creative decision of shutter speeds. If you shoot at fast shutter speeds, you're gonna get varying results depending on how much or how fast the movement is in your frame. But at times, especially when you speed things up in time lapse, things can look a bit too jerky uh, or staccato in terms of movement. Keep in mind that most of the movies that you see are shot at 1 50th or 1 40th of a second. That's something you should try to aim for when you do your calculations. That's going to give them a natural blur. And when you play them back as a video, it's going to just feel a bit more filmic than the staccato of, let's say, a 500th of a second. One of the ways to achieve this motion blur effect during the day when it's really bright is to use filtration or neutral density filters. This blocks the amount of light that actually reaches the sensor and allows you to shoot at much longer shutter speeds. This will allow you to have a nice motion blur with people walking by or even to actually, during really long exposures, completely blur them out, which is a really nice effect. One of the most effective tools we have at our disposal is a slider. It's actually a long rail that allows you to push the camera towards the subject, move it closer, or to pull back to actually go further away from your subject. The other way to move the camera, and there's actually an unlimited way of doing it, is what we call a dolly move, or a slide left or a slide right. It simply goes from left to right, or adversely, right to left. With these techniques, you're gonna find that your time maps really come to life relative to stationary cameras. All right, so now you have a really solid foundation on how to make an exciting time lapse. We'll discuss the post-workflow in the next episode. 
Let's recap some of the key creative possibilities you can utilize when shooting time-lapse photography. First, include things that are visually interesting within your frame, while excluding distractions. Second, try to avoid dead space in the foreground. Third, use two cameras if possible when you are undecided on your composition. Fourth, it is always better to overshoot and speed things up in post. Fifth, use ND filters to increase motion blur, which helps avoid stuttery time lapses. Six, create movement with tools like sliders to bring time lapses to life. Thanks for watching, and once again, this is Vincent LaFerre.